when you think about research, what comes to your mind? A wild project where results come in an eureka way? Or maybe a mundane, exhausting activity that yields insights only at the very end? Well, I think it's a bit of both. Research is exciting, but also needs to be very structured to be valid. Each research project should start with a clearly defined research question. You need to know what you are looking for before you start the project. This question will impact the design of the study, the approach taken, the methodology selected, and the examined population. It's not always possible to define a detailed, narrow question. So sometimes the research starts with a wider point of view to find a niche that needs to be addressed. When you're doing your research, you can come across two different types of information sources, primary and secondary. Primary sources give you first-hand evidence about the subject in question. In contrast, secondary sources are based on an analysis of the primary sources. Today, the internet gives you unlimited access to a whole variety of sources, all of which are within easy reach. Today, it's easier than ever to publish content that can be seen everywhere in the world by anybody at any time. That's why it is important to evaluate the sources you use for your research thoroughly and properly. Not every piece of information you find is of equal credibility. There are various checks you can do to select the sources that will be credible. You may verify the author's qualifications in the specific area or check if the material has been peer reviewed by others. You may also have a look if you encountered commercial text with the main goal of selling you the product. These are just some of the signs of potential issues with, with credibility. Research can be done using three different methodologies, which are quantitative research or quanti, qualitative research or quali for short, or mixed methods research. Quantitative research attempts to understand numerical data. For example, the number of crime occurrences, the length of sentences, and so on. Qualitative research, on the other hand, looks at non-numerical data and analyzes words, which are either spoken or written, and looks at images in either static or moving format. Finally, the mixed method research combines quantitative and qualitative data to get a wider and deeper understanding of the topic in question. However, there might be some research problems where using standard research methods might not be enough. So sometimes you may also come across creative research methods where data is collected in slightly different way. Some examples of this method including, include using visuals or artistic performance, creative writing, or even crafts. There is a variety of research methods available. Interviews are among the most common ones where you meet with a person either face-to-face -face or remotely and facilitate a conversation. You may come to this conversation prepared with a clearly defined list of questions from which you will not deviate. In this case, you will be running a structured interview. But you may also have an open set of topics to discuss where you will be able to explore other areas as you see fit. That's semi-structured interviews. Or finally, you may just have a goal set for the interview and lead the discussion freely as you see fit. In this case, we are talking about unstructured interviews. If you extend the interview to cover more than one participant simultaneously, this will be called a focus group. In this case, you will be facilitating the discussion with all people at once during a session. You may also observe participants as they go about specific tasks or how they behave in a certain context. You blend into the environment and become a member of the observed group. Observation is an ethnographic method that usually requires a lot of time to complete and demands the researcher to take ample field notes to be analyzed afterwards. Finally, 
you may ask participants to complete a predefined questionnaire, which you can distribute in many ways. You devise a set of closed and open questions and ask people to complete them. This is one of the cheapest research methods to get data. However, unfortunately, reliability is not guaranteed as people answer the questions in their own time and it might be difficult to ensure that the surveys are being completed by the people you hope would answer the questions. And you have no guarantee that the answers are open and honest. Regardless of the methodology and methods selected, a very important aspect of each research is ethics. Every researcher must ensure that their project meets certain essential criteria to be recognized as valid. As part of ethics, you must consider the well-being of the participants and the well-being of your own. You must also ensure that you will guarantee integrity, transparency, and required confidentiality for the project. You should never start research that is unethical. Well, this is just the tip of the iceberg of the fascinating research methods topic. You'll find more details in the accompanying learning resource research methods and skills on the SCG, SCCJR website. I strongly do encourage you to also check other resources, each covering a separate, very exciting topic related to criminology. Enjoy your reading and thank you very much for watching.